your new PDA yet? A little bit. Seems nicer than the one we had in Libya. Hope it's more durable. We know you'll treat this machine a lot better. I'll do my best. This thing play MP3s? Of course. Really? No. Mercenaries Playground of Destruction is an action-adventure game released for the Xbox as well as the PlayStation 2 on January 11th, 2005, was developed by Pandemic Studios and published by LucasArts. I only have one bad thing to say, and that is that the boss fights, or ace contracts, can be a bit unforgiving in difficulty. The whole game wasn't too hard or too easy, but these ace contracts ramped it up quite a bit. What makes them so hard is that there are zero checkpoints in the entire mission. So if you die, then you go back to the very start, and when some of them can take over 30 minutes, I wanted to pull my hair out every time. The story takes place in North Korea. The main target is General Choi Song. You are hired to push them back and cause as much chaos as you can. During the game, you are also trying to find the Deck of 52. Each one is a high-ranking member, and the higher up they are, the more money you get paid. After securing enough members, you will have an opportunity to take out the ace of that suit. There are four aces, and then you take on the general. Controls felt nice and responsive, but they did feel a little rough around the edges. They work well, but they seem to have needed a little polish. When I first started playing, I was surprised about how big and open the world was. I was having a blast playing and destroying everything. Then about halfway through the game, I got taken to a whole new area. There are two large open worlds to explore and have a great time in. Almost every building in the game can be blown up and leveled to the ground. It's one of the earliest examples of complete destruction that I've ever seen. It's a blast just getting in a tank or a helicopter and blowing up everything in your path. In total, there are around 18 weapons and gadgets that you have to play with, from assault rifles, C4, and RPGs, as well as various airstrikes and mortars that you can call in too. They all felt unique and equally powerful. The driving and flying are wonderful. They are both user-friendly and don't require you to be particularly good at either one. It's just easy to jump in any vehicle and get going. I wish more games would have flying controls similar to this because it's just so effortless. In the game, you work for one main faction that dishes out main story missions and four sub-factions. The four sub-factions have their own reputation bar, and if you become too unfriendly with them, then they will shoot on sight. Many missions will require you to be hostile to another, so pick and choose wisely. You are able to pay them off, however, it becomes more and more expensive as the game goes on. Luckily, when you get into any vehicle, you are disguised as that particular faction or even a civilian, but if you get close to an officer, they will see right through you. Once you complete the game, you won't go back to the open world experience like other games. This one will immediately throw you into a new game plus. You do get to keep all of your money and unlocks as typical with new game plus modes, and it's a nice touch to play the game from a more powerful perspective. At any point, except during the ace contracts, you can bring up the black market and get supplies or vehicles airdropped to your location. For a fee, of course. So if you are down on some health and ammo, or just want a certain vehicle, then call one in and get back to destroying your opposition. You can't buy everything from the start though, you will have to unlock them as you play through the game. There are over 60 vehicles that you can operate in this game, ranging from cars, buggies, trucks, tanks, and helicopters. Some of them do feel similar to others in driving style, but they all have added armor or speed, etc. It's nice that when playing, if your car gets damaged too much, you can literally hijack anything or anyone near you. Overall, the game was a blast to play, and I can't wait to get back in later with my new game plus. The two open worlds and endless destruction is carnage in the best way. It's just fun to fly around in a helicopter or drive around on the ground doing missions and exploring. The game is going for under $9 right now, and I would definitely recommend picking it up if you have the chance.